It's with our great pleasure we present to you Suzanne McLean from Theatre Peckham and co-artistic director of the Blue Elephant Theatre, Neve de Valera. Valera. Welcome, 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 welcome. Hello, hello. Wow. Hello, thank you so much for joining us. Lovely stuff. So to give you your proper title, sorry, Suzanne, I was remiss in my duties. You are the artistic director and CEO of Theatre Peckham. Big things, Adam. It's big let's, things for let's, you. Let's not forget that, okay? Um, how are you doing today? Yeah, good. You know, um, it's it's tough times right now. Um, there's a whole heap of emotions that are going through me. I think COVID-19 was one. Um, you know, huge respect to um, what's happening in America right now um, and the effects that that's having on the UK right now and, we, and a chance and an opportunity to, for us really once and for all, praise God, I hope, that we really address the inequalities that are here in the UK. Absolutely. Yeah. And unfortunately, with the situation happening, but it does mean that we've got time and space, actually, to consider a lot more. And um, people won't necessarily um, be kind of trapped in work all the time and busy, busy, busy. There's actually a bit of space for people to actually sit and comprehend these these issues happening. Um, Neve, how are you doing today? I'm not too bad. Um... It's just done a young company session for our young people's theatre. That was, um, got still lots of discussions happening there as well. Absolutely, and they should continue on and let us. Yeah, hope thankfully things seem to an ongoing conversation seems to be happening, which I think is exactly what we need. Um, Suzanne, I'll start with you. So, for our audience at home, could you tell us a bit about Theatre Peckham and what's happening that way? Sure. Well. Um, Theatre Peckham is a beautiful 200 seat theatre. Um, it's got uh, two brilliant sprung floor studios. Um, we've got studio ready for music production. We have a gallery space. We've got a welcoming vibe and that's really there and it houses these um, young creatives that come through our doors every day and inspires young people and raises ambition. All of that in a nutshell. <laughs> Is that is that what you do? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Amazing. So, um, so tell us. You mentioned the young people. So, how has Theatre Peckham uh, been engaging with its community during this time? Oh wow. So, um, we moved really quickly. Um, so I had a um, been developing an app. Um, so we used our app to send out um, content to our young people. I mean, we have about 400 young people who come through um, for between Monday and Saturday. So there's a lot of classes and a lot of young people and a lot of freelancers, actually, who are, you know, delivering those classes. So we've done that. So we send content out through our app and also kind of like some health um, health um, information and opportunities and things like that. Um, then we have our writers group that have kept going um, with Poetic Unity. They do that. And we've had master classes, which have been fantastic. Um, we have a Sunday morning chat where young people um, who are in our older age range can just come and just, just chat about things that are happening with them. Um, we had a Cronkton Night Schools Festival. Um, what else? We had our podcast, Lockdown and Me podcast. We've got our, also our discussion uh, live and direct, which is like an Instagram live that we had um, with um, other artistic directors of theatres. And that's rolling out continually. So we've got a next one that's going to be on Black Lives Matter um, that's coming up on Monday, the, um, the 15th. Yeah. So a whole heap of stuff we've been doing and just shifting everything digitally. Fantastic. It sounded like a terrible time for me to move back to North London last year with all this stuff happening down south. Um, I believe we have a clip from Theatre Peckham. So we... can the studio roll that? Is that? Yeah, I'm getting... My favourite thing about this Peckham is how I can socialise with my friends. Everyone can like join in and it like gets children and teenagers into acting. Theatre Peckham is great because it shows that there is more to Peckham than uh, the media portrays. They also advocate the importance of teaching what we've learned to the kids below us. My favourite thing in Theatre Peckham is everything. Playing the piano and learning more things and more things. There's no one else like it for young people.
Fantastic. This is exactly why, uh, government, you need to make sure that the schools can keep the drama going and we can keep engaging with it because the work that theatres do stretches way beyond just putting on shows um, for the public. That's wonderful stuff. Um, and we can see lots of stuff at your website, which is www.theatrepeckham.co.uk and follow you on your socials. Um, oh, it's okay. exciting. It's great to hear that lots of stuff is popping. Um, yeah. We now, so yes. those little faces and knowing that we've got this beautiful venue and people aren't in it. I mean, we've just had like last week, I had somebody in just to do some testing. Um, so I'll hopefully get those reports out at the end of this week or beginning of next so we can start to see how we can start building towards reopening safely. Yeah, lovely. But it seems you've done a great job of engaging in the meantime and kind of finding ways to still keep them feeling connected to the theatre mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. uh, that's brilliant. Um, so, Neve, I'm going to turn to you um, from the Blue Elephant Theatre. So the theatre, I believe, is celebrating its 21st birthday this year. Yes, yes. The, the official opening day um, birthday was the 3rd of June. We had um, the actual... Um, Antonio Rivera, who founded the theatre, after being out of touch for a long, long time, we've reconnected with, with him recently, and he made a video of this footage that was um, taken at the time, and it said that they got the licence to open two hours before the first show went up, and it just it feels like that kind of encapsulates Blue Elephant for its whole lifetime. <laughs> it's kind of that line by the theatre of um, So we're pretty, we're a fairly small theatre, we're a 50-seat venue, um, the building itself basically has a theatre space downstairs, dressing room, accessible bathroom, which if no, people haven't been there for a while, has improved dramatically in the last year, because um, it was not that good, great. Laura will know this, you've rehearsed there, <laughs> you've performed there. Um, and then the upstairs is a bar in our office, so it's, it's a pretty small theatre, but it's got a lot of heart. Um, it really does like have a lot of heart. Um, it's, it's, a real, it's a real community spirited place, I think. It's very warm and homely and yeah. Lovely stuff. So um, what have you been up to there during lockdown? We have, we've moved our youth theatres online. So they're now being um, run via Zoom, which obviously brought a lot of um, safeguarding research to, to manage to do that. But they're going really, really well, surprisingly well, because um, you would think that'd be really hard to do that virtually. Um, I think like most other people running youth theatres online at the moment we've discovered that the game fetch um is a winner for all our <laughs> age ranges um we, we could try it now between the four of us but uh, <laughs> maybe maybe next time <laughs> we, should, we, should, we should have this giant fetch game at some point um yeah. but it's going really well the we were going to have half term for the for everybody the week before last i think or last week the saturday and the um little one the youngest groups they're not that little but they were they were just like no no, we don't want half term. No, <laughs> we put more sessions on because they're. I guess like primary schools are aren't doing that much um, digitally, so they aren't having much engagement when they've seen their friends. So um, it, that's going very well. We generally run a lot of workshops in schools, so that's obviously completely stopped. Um, but kind of our artists, we're we're not really. We haven't created that much work for them, but we're kind of checking in with people who've worked with a lot with a lot of artists and kind of trying to promote what they're doing um, and also offer what support we can. Like when the Arts Council were had their grants open, we were checking in if people wanted some extra eyes on applications and stuff. And Amazing. Then we, we put a few workshops online as well that have um, been created by, uh, by us. Um, one was performed by Amanda Villanova, who had a great show with us last October. And the other two are created by the, my co-artistic director, um, who's also participation director, um, Jay Sadler love it. Um, so we've got a few workshops online for children to keep them occupied when they have to stay in all the time. Hopefully that's Amazing. Um, we have a clip to show you. So let me play the right one. Once upon a time, there was a girl named Cinderella. Because I want you to imagine yourself as a really old version of you. Calabasa. Calabasa. So grey hair, wrinkles, maybe you're even stooped over because you're so old. Maybe there's a walking stick in there as well. Tomatito. 
tu bomba y empújala y lánzala al aire. You are going to be yourself, but in the future. Lots of fun happening there. Thank you, Blue Elephant, for that. Now, uh, I'm going to step back aside. So I'm going to drop a little question bomb in there and then just walk away from it and let you all kind of have a chat. Maybe that's a bad phrasing. Let's just erase that. Um, this isn't live, is it? So I'm going to ask you both, going to put it out to you all three as artistic directors. Given that the internet can offer broader accessibility for those who may find it, um, hard to access the venues, both physically or financially. Um, to what extent do you think that um, this digital way of working will become a staple of future theatre operations? He's going to answer first. <laughs> um, I think on behalf of Long... I mean, we can only really speak independently at the moment, I guess. Um, I think, obviously, for us, we're doing this right now. Um, uh, I think for us, it's been quite an advantage to have this to reach out to a wider audience, definitely beyond um, the Myattsfield, Camberwell, Brixton area. And also with uh, going, looking at what Blue Elephant and Theatre Peckham are doing with their youth projects, um, we've been working with Lambeth um, and we've set up a, a, a new uh, almost teaching programme of how to run online events for our youth groups. So it's that wasn't a thing at the beginning that wouldn't have happened without lockdown um i don't think we would have ever had that initiative to do that so yes it, it, it will it, it has brought new things to our work definitely i mean it's, it's definitely about a really great thing of different ways of connecting with people and sharing but you know there's nothing that replaces human contact when you feel in the room and being able to really read body language and bounce off each other and all those kind of things. Um, and I think, you know, one of one of the challenges I'd say about um, this kind of like digital world that we're living in at the moment is that not everyone has access to um, this stuff. So in one sense, yes, it is great, but it's not great if you if you don't have this. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we, we did a thing where we phoned around um, all of our young people and their parents to check in on them. And that was definitely some of the things that were coming back was that, you know, for some of them, it's heartbreaking when you've got three children in the room in, in, in your house and you've got maybe one laptop or you've just got your phone and they want to do a drama class on it. And it's like how are you splitting which child is going to have it. And plus you as a mm -hmm. parent your own needs as well you know so um yeah it's it's great but i think at some point it kind of also extends the fact that um you know there's, there's such vast inequalities that are out there yeah. Mm. yeah even in this there's not there's no equalizer um but it's i think we've learned an awful lot. everyone's learned an awful lot i think we've also seen that the resourcefulness of the the industry or people generally that they're like well the show must go on somehow um which is it's quite nice because it's like back at the end of march it did feel like everything was imploding um and nobody knew what was happening next um so it's very inspiring that everyone's really like come together and worked created so much and learned so much where although there's obviously the industry needs a lot of help because there's so, yeah. so so much happening and so many people are facing terrible you know terrible realities um and the people we reach are as well um but i so i, I would also agree there's nothing like live and i can't wait to go back to it but i think we've, we've also learned a lot and we can incorporate a lot and we can maybe have a the, we can take the bet we can keep the best of it there's another other projects where elderly people weren't able to take part. This isn't our project, but another project somebody was talking to. They weren't able to take part in the project as it was starting in earlier in this year. And then when it moved online, they were able to. Um, mm. I think that the combination of the two together is sort of the best bet, really, isn't it? That'd be the ideal. And hopefully we'll get back there one day as having the live and the online. And I think 
uh, a benefit, I guess, of this is for artists learning the basics of how to do it and, and also platforms and businesses opening up to provide more accessibility of, of easier ways to, to stream stuff online. And so I think, yeah, the ideal would be having having both so that you can bring everyone together in, in, in some way, those that can't access the building, those that can't access the online. And also using more, you know, in terms of connecting with people, you know, there was a time before when if you didn't meet somebody face to face, you were just like, you kept re-diarising it, going, oh, <laughs> and actually you kind of go, yeah, we could have just like had a Zoom call because Zoom was here before COVID-19, you, know? <laughs> you know, and it was, yeah, it's so those things, you can actually speed up some communications with people um, and also connect people uh, a lot quicker and stronger in a way yeah. uh, through it as well. Absolutely. I think you sort of touched on it a bit from the um, challenges from the, I guess, uh, the young people and I guess other people on the outside. But um, what sort of challenges have you faced with adapting programmes or creating new programmes to, to try and fit into this new age? Um, some of it has been, um, like we said before, the safeguarding of it. Um, that's definitely a consideration. I think we're all learning it as we're going along and I think all organizations are making some mistakes and rectifying it including you know zoom and um house party and all you know everything's coming up for everyone that they just didn't um didn't plan for before um and then also about I think it takes it takes longer to warm up on a you know in the you know socially interaction way in this way um and you know for some young people you know if you don't have your quiet room your brother and your sister in the background <laughs> do what we're doing you know we've had old ones where we've gone okay it's great we're gonna have this voice class and you know you forget that they're in their bedroom trying to have this voice class and as soon as it finishes you've got all of your family outside your door ready to take them <laughs> <laughs> you know, where trying is trying to kick everyone off the Wi-Fi. Get off the Wi-Fi. <laughs> Just dream yeah, something. Like tonight. I'm in that film. I'm trying to do my voice class. Um, so yeah, so there's you know things like that to just like to work through. There's been some challenges. Yeah. How about you, Neve? Some some quite similar. Um, oh, some really sweet moments as well. Like I was saying, that game Fetch. There was one of our teenage groups was playing that, and they the the thing was fetch something beginning with S, um, and one of the girls just turned around and was like sibling because her little brother was in the background <laughs> playing the computer game. <laughs> I was just like, I thought she should win that round. I thought she <laughs> won the session. Wonderful. Um, yeah, and I think finding somehow also trying to keep communication between the organisation. We've got a lot of people who work part time, and on different projects in different areas, and trying. So we've like we've said to like treat the Zoom chat as a virtual office, just to throw out anything, even if it's like just a cartoon you've read or something that makes it fun, that you think find funny, just to kind of keep everybody feeling like they're part of the same organization, working towards the same sort of goals and stuff. Mm. Lovely stuff. Um, so I guess before we say goodbye, I mean, I could probably just sit here and chat to you for another yeah. couple of hours or so, um, but you probably won't like that. And <laughs> but I'd have a great time. But um, do you have any sort of tips? So if there are any sort of organisations, maybe um, smaller groups um, that would like to engage with their young people or just their community um, through theatre or any of the things that you've been doing, do you have any tips of how people can engage their communities and youth groups? I think just starting conversations for me has been a big thing. I mean, it sounds very obvious, but I think I, I've become really aware of how much I wasn't talking to um, the community enough. And I think as we were talking about the Zoom stuff, like it, there, it, there's this world of possibility out there where you can have meetings when you can't make them. And so just talking to more people working within your community, um, this whole project tonight is all about that really. I've been, you know, just, getting involved with other artists and really talking to them and seeing how they're feeling and what they want to do and how they want to 
go forward um, and that is the same with artists coming on the show tonight uh, our, our youth groups um, collaborators uh, Lambeth Council you know everyone that's around us I think those conversations are, are really important right now mm -hmm. yeah, yeah I, I totally agree sorry go on I was gonna say I really agree as well and just kind of be thinking like not one size fits all like you were saying like some people will engage online but some people might post things too some people might just want the conversation because they're lonely just different ways mm. and I think the um as artistic directors some sometimes there's something really simple in just listening to what other people want mm -hmm. um, giving them the platform to make it happen and and that's a really great way to rather than trying to think about what the community want or what young people want just give them the space to say what it is and to create what it is and even if they don't even know what it is until they start doing something and then it forms i think that's yeah that's a really great way to connect that is fantastic i think the the, the big message which i think we should all take is ask and listen Okay, which is a great step we can all take. Thank you so much um, for joining us today. I um, really appreciate you giving up your time um, and also lots of information, um, that lovely tidbits that we can all use and apply. Um, Suzanne McLean, uh, CEO and Artistic Director of Theatre Peckham, thank you so much for being with us. Details below. Um, and if you'd like to donate any money in there, they've got pro programmes which uh, the money will be spent really wisely. I believe so and there's lots happening there um also Neve de Valera thank you so much for coming from the Blue Elephant Theatre okay. equally they have programs happening for which your money will also go into helping to keep the dialogue going and engagement with the community thank you both so much for coming on to be with us thank you also so much and hopefully see you in person sometime soon <laughs> thank you Laura thank, thank you, you. Bye. lovely take care